the 18 Strong Podcast, episode number 368 with Cody Westcott from Cody Westcott Golf. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the 18 Strong Podcast, where we're here to help you build a stronger game because we believe that every golfer deserves to play better longer. And this week, we have Cody Westcott from Cody Westcott Golf and the Swing Heavy Lift Fast program. This episode is a fun one for me because this is the first time I get to meet Cody and talk about the the growth that he's had, first of all, in social media, in the golf and fitness world. And I think he's one of the guys putting out some of the best content when it comes to education in the golf and fitness world and really taking a no BS attitude and laying on, you know, what's going to make your program most optimal. Is traditional weight training, is traditional strength training good for your golf game? Yeah, it can be, but is it optimal for what you're wanting to do and, and what your goals are in the gym? So we have some great conversations about what that looks like, what you want to do, what are the things that you want to put into your program simply because you like them, and what are the things you need to put in there because they're going to work. And then we talk about a couple topics that that Cody's been pretty hard-lined on, and that's the difference between golf exercises and golf drills. Where is that crossover, and where is the separation? And, And are you doing golf exercises or golf drills, and are they really being effective in your training program. And then lastly, we touch on a bit of a sensitive topic for probably a lot of the listeners of this show, for those of you that are coaches and trainers, but talking to the golfers out there, Cody discusses why you may not need a personal trainer and why that actually might be detracting from your goals and detracting from your results. And we go have a great conversation around that. So you're going to really enjoy this episode of the 18 Strong Podcast right after this. Our partners over at Linksole have been providing us with the best apparel for both on the course and off the course, from polos to t-shirts like the one I have on right now. Everything that they have is meant to be worn from the golf course to wherever you're going next, whether that be casual, whether that be to the beach, there's all different options over there. So go to 18strong.com slash Linksole. You'll get 20% off of anything in your cart over on Linksole's website. So again, 18strong.com slash Linksole for our favorite brand of apparel for anything on the golf course and off. Now let's get to this week's interview. Cody Westcott, welcome to the 18 Strong Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so this is really fun to, to finally get to connect with you. I've been following your stuff on social media for a while. And one of the cool things, and we just had a couple other people on recently, and I'm, I said one of the cool things about what we do with the podcast here, or cool things for me, is being able to connect with people like you that I, I really respect the way that you're putting your content out, the content that you're putting out. So first of all, just uh, keep doing what you're doing because I, I love watching it. I learn stuff from when I'm watching your content, and I know that our crew is too. So uh, sure. excited to have you on. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I mean, um, the, the content game, social media has been such a game changer. I think, you know, I've, I've listened to your show a few times, so I know I'm not alone when I say that. Like, it really has just, like, opened so many doors Um, Because I've been doing, you know, the fitness thing for a long time. And just when you consistently start posting content, like things happen for you that I, that I never thought would happen. So it's really cool. Like I've been on, you know, someone's podcast, like, you know, a few years ago, I never would have thought about this. So this is really cool. When, when did your, um, is Instagram your, your biggest platform as far as your social media content? For sure. When did that really kind of take off for you? You know, um, so I was a trainer for like, you know, 12 years before I ever like made a post about my services. Right. So, um, but I think it was summer 2022 is when I started posting about every single day. Um, just cause I was in an environment down in a gym, uh, down in Jupiter where like, that was pretty much what everybody was doing is, um, mm-hmm. like that was like bigger part of our job was actually like creating social media content. And, um, that's when I started doing it every single day. And then I think, you know, the thing is like, I didn't, it took me forever to like get up and going. I mean, I think I made, I think I posted like 90 days in a row before I ever got like a thousand followers, you know? So wow. like, you know, I get like 12 likes on a post or something like that. So it was a little discouraging, but I was like, you know what? Like, I think it's one of those things that if you just keep trying and work hard and put out good stuff. It's eventually going to catch on. And so that's what I did. I just kept going, kept going. And um, I want to say it was probably like right around like holiday season. So probably like Thanksgiving of 2022. Um, you know, probably like almost like six months into the thing, I got to 10,000 followers. 
And then that's, I don't know if it starts like kind of snowballing or if the algorithm like kind of catches on and people are watching your stuff. And then, but that, that first 10 was super hard. And then now I think we're, you know, what, like 14 months later, I'm at like 70,000. Yeah. And that's been really cool. Um, just because, you know, when you're a personal trainer, you are pretty limited on how many people you can work one-on-one with, right? Or how many people you can really make a change for. Um, Because I've done group fitness before too, where you're coaching like 40, 50 people at once. But, you know, as a personal trainer, if you're super busy, um, I mean, if you're talking about doing 30, 40 sessions a week, that is a very, very busy personal trainer, right? And if you have, you know, people doing two to three sessions a week, like, what are you looking at? You may have, you might have like 10 to 12 to 15 clients, really, right? So for me to go from that on a weekly basis, like I'm only touching like 12, 15 people um, to reaching thousands has been, um, like really gratifying and, and a lot of fun too. Yeah. When, when did you kind of shift out of the, the in-person training role? Cause I know you said you, you really just work with, I think a single client yep. in person, the rest is pretty much online. Yeah. It's all, um, all on my app now Well, I use train heroic, but you know, I have my programming on, on their app. Um, it's been, since I moved back to Oklahoma, I moved back here, um, in December, twenty. 22, um, moved back here and I was still doing some zoom sessions. So like still doing one-on-one, but now, yeah, for the past, like I think about 12 months, I've had just one guy that I trained in person and the rest is I've got some, I've, I've got, I've got people that I've been doing one-on-one programming for, for years now. Um, but now I just put all my time into creating the programming on the app. Yeah. It, it looks great. Uh, we'll, we'll be sure to link all this stuff up in the show notes as well. So you guys can go and check out the website, check out the app. Um, you know, everything, everything about it looks really good. You know, like it just kind of draws the eye in. Um, your, your content is great as far as just really pointing out the, the no BS, right? Which I think is really one of the big messages that you, that you have is like, hey, don't do the silly stuff. Um, here's the way or here, here are ways for you to really get to where you want to go with your, your golf, with your fitness. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to, to ask you about, which is a message that continually goes through your content is not training the old way you used to train, you know, it hasn't gotten you where you want to go yet. So why are you continuing to do it? Expand on that a little bit. Yeah, that, that's been, um, that's been a topic that's done pretty well for me lately. So you, know, you kind of, um, catch on to things that people kind of believe in, in what you're saying more. Right. Cause like that is like a truly like authentic thing for me is like, I have literally experienced, I think every possible imagine or every type of fitness that is out there. Right. So like, I feel like I can speak to that. Right. Like, so I've done CrossFit, I've done bodybuilding, I've done powerlifting. I did Spartan races. I, I raced high rocks. Um, my wife used to teach yoga. I've done yoga. She also taught Pilates. I've done Pilates. Like I've literally, I, we, her and I co-taught a boxing class together. So, I mean, I've done like pretty much everything in fitness and I've also ran gyms. I was a regional fitness manager in Washington, DC. I ran three gyms. Like when I tell you like that, I have pretty much done everything that normal people in fitness can do. Like I've done it. So now like my thing is that I don't think that any method of training is necessarily bad, right? Like, so for, for golf, that is like, so like, I don't think that anything that's going to get you in better shape, like, you know, whether it increases your, maybe you're doing like a orange theory, right? And it's going to increase your endurance. Um, you know, it's going to make you a little stronger, you know, so stuff like that. But any kind of workout program, CrossFit, bodybuilding, whatever it is, if it gets you in better shape, I think it can help the game of golf. Now, what I always tell people is like, is that optimal for the game of golf? And my answer for some of that stuff is no. Like, I don't think that training like a bodybuilder is going to help you play your best. You know, can it, is it going to be better than you sitting on the couch every single day? And will it help you play better if you go train like a bodybuilder? Probably because you're getting stronger going to get more mobile. You're going to be pretty sore. So it might suck to go practice that next day or something. If you just wrecked your pecs or something and your chest and your shoulders, you know, that might suck. But, you know, when you recover from that, your chest is going to be stronger and more flexible. And, and so, yeah, that, that could help you play golf, but you know, I'm here for, getting athletes to perform at their best. And I think what's interesting about golf is that it's a very unique game, right? It requires mobility, strength, and power. And each one of those, pro- whatever program you do out there might give you a little bit of one of those things, right? But if we do a golf program, we can have it all. 
So. What, what do you feel is um, kind of the secret sauce of hitting all of those boxes in a program and not going too far in one direction? Because I, I feel like we can definitely get into the mindset or, or many of the golfers can get in the mindset of, oh, well, I just got to work on my mobility or I, gotta, I just got to work on my speed or I'm going to get stronger or, you know, how, how have you found to really tie those things together? And like you said, really become more of an athlete when you're in the gym. Right. And, you know, you think about like, could you put all that stuff into a workout? You can, right? Like it could be a long workout, but you know, yeah, right. Um, and how much juice is the average person going to have at the end of a 90 minute session or something like that? Right. So I think, yeah, we got to be pretty strategic about how we do it. I, I like to give people total body workouts, right? So, um, as opposed to doing a, a bodybuilding split. And yeah, I think, you know, you can put in, you know, targeted mobility work that also is going to, um, prepare you, like, you know, prime you up for the workout that you're about to do. You can put in a few reps of like, maybe it's, uh, plyos, like, you know, jumps, maybe it's a couple of med ball slams. Um, I like to do the, I like to use the sled, um, you know, wh whatever it is that that person has available, maybe it's just bands, maybe they, you know, whatever they have available, do something that's pretty fast. And I'll have to do that, you know, like right after your warm up, your mobility. So that way you're touching on some speed. Um, and I don't think, you know, you need to do a whole lot of it, right? Like I think speed is, you know, a pretty low, low volume, right? Like we're talking like a couple of sets, you know, two, three sets, one to three sets actually, right? And then that lower rep range and then hitting a couple of our compound movements. And I really try to get people to do like two to three to four sessions a week. And then I'll put in like my, like my, um, in my app, I have like, our, I call them our May workouts. They're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're going to, the workout's going to be structured kind of like I just described. And then like on Tuesdays, I have them just do like mobility and zone two cardio. Um, Saturday is more of like an interval style, like hit training. So that way you can kind of get it a little bit, a little bit heart rate up a little bit higher, come back down, recover, um, things like that. And, and it's still going to have some mobility at the beginning of that workout too. So I like to, that's how I like to do it. And it's worked really well. Um, and like, you know, I kind of just took it all from, every facet of training I've ever done and like, just kind of, okay, like, you know, it doesn't make sense. And just, it just makes sense. Right. Like once you become, when you're a trainer and you, you know, what's up, it's like, okay, you can't put this power at the end because you're going to be dead. I don't put mobility at the end. Cause it's like, it can be paired with a warm up. Like, so you just, it just makes sense. And I think it's really worked well for me and for the, um, the hundreds of athletes now that, that, that are on board with uh, lift heavy swing fast. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the name by the way. Uh, oh. it's great. Just straight to the point, right? I yeah, got, I got for those the trademark, by the way. Did you really? Oh yeah. Nice. You should have for sure. Yeah. For those of you that aren't watching on, on YouTube, he's got the, the neon sign. He's in his podcast studio too, uh, which he's got the shooting straight podcast that he does with his wife. So definitely check that out. We'll link that in the show notes as well. Um, Appreciate that. but yeah, I mean, j just the breakdown of that, of that, you're right. It just seems to make sense. Um, I like how you then have like something on Saturday too, where it almost gives them a little bit of a variety too, probably as far as the conditioning stuff, how much conditioning do you think golfers need and is that something they need is that something that they want is that something that you like to throw in there uh that's a great question i love how you word that's like something they need or something they want right like that's what that's what they come to us for right jeff is like i'm gonna tell you what you need like do you really really want to do this i hope so I, ho I hope i'm gonna get you to buy in and believe what i'm saying and you're gonna get excited and want to do it right like yeah but yeah so need i mean I love zone two cardio. That has become like my really, my, my big thing lately is, is getting people into that heart rate zone. And, um, you know, for your listeners out there, you can just simply like kind of Google zone two cardio and you can quickly figure out what heart rate you need to be in to, to get into zone two. Um, but golf is long, right? I mean, if you're talking, you know, people don't talk, think that golf is like, you know, taxing and, and, and they're right. It's not, it's not, you're not playing a football game. You're not playing a basketball game. So it's not taxing in that way, but yeah, you're out there for a while. I mean, if you go warm up and, if it's slow, I mean, we're talking like my wife says I'm out there all day, right? And she's not, she's not wrong. Like, you know, she's not wrong. You know, right? Like if I go warm up for an hour, do my routine and just cause I like it, you know, I don't think you'd warm up for an hour, but I like, you know, I work, I warm up in my gym first. I go to my club, I putt, I chip cause I just love it. Um, and then, you know, you play and you know, what, how long could you be out there? Six hours, right? Easy. You're up there standing, walking around, chipping, putting, hitting drivers. Like, yeah, I think endurance plays a bigger role than people probably want it to want it to be because I don't think people love working on their cardio and working on their uh, VO2 max and their um, aerobic conditioning and all that kind of stuff. But I think it plays a huge role. And it also 
plays a pretty good role in, in how you're going to recover and how you're going to perform in your own workouts, right? Like you're, if you're better conditioned, you know, like a, like a heavy set of, of squats or presses or whatever it is that you're going to do, like it's going to help you recover in between those sets too. Um, so then you're able to get stronger and then, um, recover in, in your power workouts. Like it, it benefits everything. Yeah. You know what? That's a great point that I think is overlooked is, is the recovery piece of it and how that you don't necessarily have to be conditioning yourself for the sport itself when you're out on the golf course. And that is definitely going to help you. We, we just talked to Mitch Sadowski recently and talking about how golf is an explosive sport, but it's also an endurance sport, especially if you're a high level golf and you're playing four days in a row. But from the recovery aspect of during your workouts and from day to day, being in, in better cardiovascular shape is absolutely going to help you improve from, from set to set, from rep to rep, and from tournament day to tournament day and, and practice session to practice session. So that's, and, that's and awesome. you know, like, you know, there's so many studies out there that prove that, you know, resistance training, cardiovascular training are like the pillars of longevity, right? And we all want to do this living well thing for a long time. And we want to play golf for a long time. Like I want to play golf when I'm a hundred, you know, like, and I think we all do. Um, so, you know, if cardiovascular health is going to help me get there, then I better do, I better be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't all have to be about, you know, from shot to shot, what you're doing on the golf course. Um, and, and that's the piece that I think you, myself, most of the professionals in our industry, yeah, we want you to, to lower your handicap. We want you to swing faster. We want you to hit the ball further and straighter. But ultimately, I'd love to see you play another 10, 20, 30, 40 years and do it well too, right? Not, not just be out there kind of dinking it around, but be the guy that's out there in his seventies and eighties and people are like, holy cow, can you imagine, or can you believe that this guy's out here doing it? So. Yeah, that, that's who I want to be, right? And like, that's who I want everyone else to be. Um, you know, it kills me when I'm out at my club and, um, you know, I, I play with uh, one guy who's like, I'm 37 and he's like, I think he's almost 50. He's in pretty good shape, plays really well. And then some of the guys we play with, you know, they're, they're getting a little older. I think that, you know, they're in their sixties and, um, you know, their, their health is, you know, they're overweight, like their, their body's starting to break down a little bit, their back hurts. And, you know, sadly, I think they think that they're going to turn it around somewhere. Right. And I'm just like, it breaks my heart. And I'm like, if you don't do anything about it, right. Like it's, it's not going to imagine you're not going to get out of the slump right now. Like, you know, at 65 years old, I'm sorry. Like, unless we like get you moving better and drop some weight and get you stronger and maybe make you faster. Like, I don't think it's going to go up or even plateau. Right. Like we're, you're, it's going to start sliding back and we don't want that. Sadly. And. Yeah. And that's a message that I wish the 35 year olds could hear and, and project forward, right? Or the, the 25 year olds, 30, 35, 40, when we tend to get in this, this area of, you know, raising kids and being at a desk job or whatever your career path is, your family life is, we tend to neglect those things. We tend to neglect ourselves. And then you turn into that 65 year old that is still kind of hoping that things will turn around, but it's like, no, the time is now. You got to start doing this stuff now, even if it, you start very simple, right? You start with just some mobility stuff and just getting in the gym a little bit. So that message rings true. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had a guy, I worked at a country club in um, Alexandria, Virginia, just right across uh, the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. Had a guy, mid 80s, you know, um, like 85 years old. His name was Tony. And he came in, he worked his ass off, slammed the ball around. I got him on the TRX and did some jump squats and stuff at 85 years old. And that man got out there and, you know, he felt better than ever. And so, I mean, it, it, it's not too, you know, so like my message is like, yeah, it's definitely not too late. And like, you know, people that are around my age or even a little bit younger, like, you know, it, it's, it's going to, we're going to be there one day. So, you know, don't let it catch you off guard. Yeah. Yeah. Be like Tony. That's, no, after. Tony crushes it. Tony's got a bitch named after him out there. He's like, oh no, a bridge, not a bitch. Excuse me. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, when better. I'm gone, they're going to tear that bridge down. I'm like, no, they're not Tony. It's a great bridge. Like it's not going anywhere. I use that breach. Love it. Yeah, people <laughs> use it. They can't tear it down. We need that. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at First Form. And this week, I want to highlight their Formula One post-workout protein shake. I use this thing pretty much every day after my workouts because, let's face it, being here in the gym, working all the time with clients, putting on a podcast, it can sometimes be tough 
to get my protein in on a regular basis. And so I know that with the post-workout shake, the Formula One, first of all, it's fast acting. So right after your workout is a great time to get your protein in to help build your muscles, get yourself stronger and repair what you've done in the gym. But also, if you don't know if you're gonna be able to get your protein in in your regular meals, it's just a great way to make sure that you're supplementing and hitting those marks. So be sure to go over to firstform.com forward slash 18 strong to get your first form Formula One protein shake. And everyone that enters through that link is gonna be put into a drawing every single month for free first form products. So again, go over to firstform.com forward slash 18 strong. So uh, what kind of sports did you play when you're growing up? Obviously you're, you're very fit. You, you know, obviously you're in the fitness industry, but I, I assume you, you know, played some sports back in the day. And then um, I wanna know what changed as far as your training mentality and how you've transitioned yourself into, because I, I, you know, saw on the website that, you know, you you've really amped up your game quite a bit recently too. Yeah. So I mean, um, growing up, I played baseball, um, basketball. Um, I had a lot of, you know, I, I had some things happen when I was a kid, some 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 things with my family that um, really got me distracted um, for a little while. I think I had the talent, to be honest with you, to um, play like, you know, after high school and all that kind of stuff, but. I just got distracted and I, I, you know, did some other things that people shouldn't do. Uh, that was a big part of my life. Uh, I've talked about that on my podcast is like, I, I struggled with drugs and alcohol and things like that, um, in my youth, um, and even into my twenties. But, um, I really found solace in the weight room. Like when I was in high school, so like, you know, I'm 37, I've been working out since like I was a freshman in high school. So we're talking like, you know, 20 something years ago. Right. And, um, I just found the love for working out, right. Like just lifting weights and, I remember just working out with some of my buddies and I just felt it different. Like, you know, as soon as I like did call it a bicep curl for, for ease, right. I just did a bicep curl and they're they always like, man, I can tell in your face that you feel that, you know what you're doing. Like, and I just like, I just naturally like figured it out. And then, so I started like training them, you know, to try to get them to like learn how to do this stuff. And I'd just be ripping pages out of the muscle fitness magazines. I mean, you know, this is 20 something years ago. We didn't really, uh, I didn't have a smartphone, didn't have Google. Like I just went to the store and then I took my, ripped up muscle fitness magazines of Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman and, and, and took those into the gym. And our weight training coach, he was like in his eighties coach Detola, And he just yelled at me. He's like, don't do that. You know, you're going to break your arm, like whatever, you know? So, and I'd be teaching my buddies. I remember this one time I had my buddy come in and the weight room was right, right outside the basketball um, court. And I was having us do walking lunges up and down the court. And my buddy, I don't know if he ever worked out again in his life because he was so sore <laughs> like, after that. Um, I don't, maybe he's never worked out again. But yeah, so um, I just really found, you know, the weight room um, to be like my place. And so like I, when I was in high school, like I had some weightlifting records for my um, weight class, which was very light back then because I'm only like five, six. I was probably like five, four back then, like 120 pounds. Like almost, I think I almost did like a 400 pound deadlift back then. I was able to do like, 70 unbroken dips like you know it was cool stuff whoa so i was very very into that back then um you know so but then you know i didn't um like go to school for it or anything um you know i'm from oklahoma you know when i i don't remember like people like being into fitness like you know i went to the gym like it wasn't a personal trainer back then there was no one i went to the gym the guy owned it and like he would kind of help you out and like his son was around but like no there was no trainer like there's this wasn't a career um you know i didn't think it was so I actually, um, ended up in the restaurant business. I was waiting tables. It was like one of my jobs. Um, you know, and I went to the guidance counselor and she's like, well, what do you like to do? I was like, I like to work out and I wait tables. She's like, well, you know, we got a great like hospitality program. You know, I wish she would have been like, Hey, why don't you get into this like exercise science or something, yeah. you know, but Hey, hindsight's 2020, it all worked out pretty well for me. Um, but so I was in the restaurant business for a long time. And I actually think that really helped me in to be where I am today. Cause it, develop a ton of skills like if you've ever if you're working in the restaurant business yeah yeah so you know yeah, bus tables and yep yes. all kinds of stuff yeah you know so like i was a manager like you know so but anyways and then um i was at a gym uh working out just like before my shift at, at work and the guy comes up and he's like the fitness manager's like hey man do you want to be a personal trainer and i was like okay i was like how do i do that he's like oh just get the certification and you know we'll we'll set you up with clients so i was like oh yeah I was at a gold's gym, you know, like 12 years ago. And, uh, so yeah, then, then I quit doing the restaurant business. I got all in into to fitness and, you know, so back then, you know, like all I really knew how to do was like bodybuilding and powerlifting. 
Like that's really all I, I, I knew how to lift heavy. I knew how to like give big, like that was it. And, um, but then when you get your first client, you know, they only pay to come see you once a week. I'm like, what are you gonna do with them? Am I gonna have you do chest day? And then what are you gonna do in the next like four? And then what am I right. gonna do next week? I'm gonna have you do leg, you know, by the end of the month, we're gonna give all- Yeah, one, one month split. Yeah, like, so you had, to, you had to change, you had to figure it out. And I was like, okay, well, this isn't sustainable for most people. What do we need to do? And I remember my very first fitness manager wrote down on a piece of paper and this like kind of changed my life. He wrote out, he's like, lower core upper. And I was like, simple enough, right? And that, that was like my first like exposure into like just very basic, like we all know this now, right? But like back then, like I didn't really know. And um, so yeah, then I started kind of evolving that. It's like, okay, how can I get people the biggest bang for their buck? How can we get the most results on like once a week? Okay, and then some people do twice a week. How can we get a big bang for their buck? Like, what is it gonna be? And most people, you know, we're talking about general population people, right? Like, what do they want? They want to lose weight, right? But I don't control what they yep. put in their mouth. So how do I keep them happy? And it's like, okay, let's start focusing on performance, right? And that's where I've, that, so like a long time ago, I really figured out that to make someone happy and to like get them to continue on this fitness journey, it's got to be performance-based, right? Like if I want to help someone lose weight, then I've got to really talk about nutrition. Um, so that's like where the whole like train for performance thing, like really, really started for me, like early on in my personal training career. Um, and then I just met people along the way that, you know, at the time I didn't realize they were basically my mentors, but they were guys that like taught me like even more about like strength training and, um, stuff like that. So. So did you start working with, uh, a lot of athletes in, at that time period or was it just more general population that, you know, wanted to have some sort of performance-based training in some capacity? Yeah. So it was, um, they, they didn't know they were, they wanted performance-based training. That's what, that's like what I, you know, like yeah, right. a minute ago, I was like, what do they want? What do they need? I'm like, well, here's, you know, what you want, but here's what you're going to need to get there. Right. So like, let's just get you stronger. That, that's going to help your quality of life. So like, yeah, first, like my first probably three years into the business, right? Like I, I just general population people, right? People, everyday people wanting to get stronger, injured, you know, wanted to lose weight, just live a better quality of life. Um, and then, you know, I loved golf and I really wanted to, you know, dive into golfers. And so NASM, the National Academy of Sports Medicine, where I got my personal painter certification, had a golf certification. Did you ever see that? You know, that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't go through it, but I, I, I remember that coming out. Yeah. So I did that. I think that was like in 2015. I did that. And then, yeah. um, I gra I found a few golfers in the gym and like, just kind of like begged them to let me like do some stuff with them because they weren't really into training, but I knew cause, but we had talked about golf before. Um, they didn't want to really want to pay for training. I was like, I don't even really care. Like, just kind of let me just try some of this stuff on you. Let me just like, <laughs> you know, cause, um, cause in Washington, uh, this is in, I was living in Washington DC at the time that this happened. Okay. And if you're familiar with Washington, D.C., it's like, it's not a really commuter friendly city. Like, you know, it's, it's tough to go play golf. Like I didn't have a, I didn't even have a car. So like I took the subway, you know, so like, it's kind of, and you know, we did, um, golf simulator places weren't really popular back then. Well, right. um, like they are now. I mean, this is only like seven years ago, but, well, oh, shit, no, longer than that now. I forget it's 2024. But anyways, that, <laughs> right. um, they, they weren't, they weren't as accessible. So like, you know, to go play golf, I had to literally get on a subway, a bus, and then, you know, or take an Uber and no one really wants to do that. Right. So that's my first like exposure into golfers. Um, and then I just learned more and more along the way, like doing TPI and, um, all of that stuff to, to get to where I am now to where I'm just training or just writing programs for golf. Right. And then you, you just recently, how long ago did you move back to Oklahoma again after you were down in Jupiter? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, went to Washington DC in 2015. I oh, know 2014 and then moved from, I moved all around. Then we went from Washington, DC, my wife and I, then we moved from there to Austin, Texas. Um, that's when I really started working. You've been everywhere. Yeah. That's when I really started working with a lot of golfers was down in Austin. Um, you know, I work, I partnered with some swing coaches. There's some guys at a simulator place in Austin called rock R O K rock golf. Um, I met a lot of golfers there. Um, yeah. Partnered with the swing coaches and trade. I, I, I traded out them. I, I would do sessions with them. I would train them in the gym and then they would give me swing lessons. Um, pretty oh, sweet nice. deal. And then, yeah. uh, then we moved back to Washington, DC, then moved down to Jupiter, Florida. And now we're here. So been back, I'm called, I'm what they call a boomerang yeah. since I left and came back. Um, so back here. Yeah. I've been back here a little over a year. Awesome. Love it here. So I was kind of, 
I was kind of going through some of your podcasts and, uh, you know, some of the topics on there really stuck out to me. And, you know, there are questions that people have about, you know, what is golf training? How do you implement golf training? How does it help your golf swing? And one of the things that you had posed a question of, of is, you know, what's a golf exercise versus what's a golf drill? Can, can you break that down a little bit? Because it, it's kind of a gray area that I think people get confused and, you know, frankly, can be confusing for us coaches as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, you're talking about the episode where I, I even asked my wife, I was like, hey, like, please help me with like explaining this because it is like very nuanced and like it can be kind of tricky to even explain this. So, yeah. So what I like to think about is like I work with a swing coach, right? He gives me a drill that is with a golf club in my hand for my exact like swing issue. Right. And I think that, you know, that drill is much better served with a club in my hand. I don't think I need to go try to turn that drill into grabbing a band or getting a kettlebell or something like that and try to make it into a fancy golf exercise because it may not um, give me like enough like stimulus, right? Like provide my body with like enough like reason. Because we have, the reason we exercise is that we give our body a reason to adapt to the exercise we're doing, right? And recover and, and things like that. So if I'm taking this drill and like trying to turn it into an exercise, like may, that exercise like might not be that stimulating to me, right? And it might not really just do a whole lot for my body. Like it may not change my central nervous system, might not build any muscle, it might not gain mobility. It might, it's, it's going to, it could just end up in no man's land, right? Whereas mm -hmm. I'd be much better off just taking his drill with the golf club and doing it a thousand times, like he told me to do, right? Instead of like, oh, let me get here. Let me grab this band or let me get a million of the other toys that I had to play with and try to like, oh, here, what if I, you know, help my, hip, you know, get in my hip depth. What if I do this and and grab this kettlebell, but with this band and, you know, I'm, I'm, but the thing is like, is that again, is that stuff bad? Like, is, is it better than getting up off the couch? Absolutely. Right. But I'd much rather do what I need to do in the gym to make me more mobile, strong, um, you know, and powerful. Right. Um, instead of just messing up his drill that he gave me, if that makes like, yeah. So it's very nuanced, but like, yeah, I think if you, if you, take it out of context and try to turn it into something that it shouldn't be, it could be a problem. Yeah. It's like, what's, mo what's most efficient, right? Like what, what are you best spent? What's your time best spent on? Is it actually working on the skill or is it trying to come up with a way to kind of mimic it? But like you said, if it doesn't really create the adaptation, it's almost like, am I just kind of making stuff up that is kind of wasting my time where I could be either doing that drill or I could be lifting heavy or, or lifting something that's going to provide a little bit more of that adaptation. Exactly. Yeah. And I think we can, you know, in social media, we can kind of get ourselves in that trap, right? Because, um, you know, one of my, you know, when you're, I spend a lot of my time in big box gyms. Um, you know, uh, what kind of listeners do you have? Like, do you think I know what a big box gym is? Like, we're talking like a gold's gym or like a Planet Fitness or. Yeah, I would say most of the listeners are either kind of the 35 plus golfers or a lot of people in our industry, medical pros, fitness pros, all kind of tied into the golf world as well. Okay. So like a big box gym, like a Gold's. Well, a Gold's is a big company. They want to make money, right? So like one of the things I'll, you know, so as a trainer, as a fitness manager that I was, you are there to make sales. And one of the things the guy would tell me is like, you know what? Hey man, I know you're here. When I was like, a, when I was a new trainer, he was like, Hey man, I know you're here to like train people, help them out. Like that's what every trainer wants. He was like, but you cannot train what you cannot obtain. So like you have to sell them or now in the day of social media, we have to like bring them in somehow. And usually the way you catch a golfer's attention, right, is not by doing a 405 pound barbell back squat. It's going to be by doing something that looks like it will help them with their golf. Swing. So I think we all have are guilty of that and like and not for a bad reason, right? Because it, it does help. Um, but I always tell people it's kind of like the icing on the cake for like when it comes to golf fitness training. And I saw this firsthand when I worked, I'll just leave the gym nameless, but one of the guys like, you know, posted a lot on social media and it was a lot of this, a lot of the mobility stuff. Right. And when the guy came in to work with him, he like put them through his normal workout, which included like, I think it was like Bulgarian split squats. He had him doing pull-ups. He had him doing, um, you know, a, like a trap bar deadlift or something like, you know, just some stuff like that, along with some of the other things. Like I was like, no, 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 man, I, like, I, I, came, I came here to do all the stuff 
on your social media. And I had to listen to him explain to the guy like, hey, no, no, actually, yes, we do that stuff. But here's like the, the big chunk of how I train. And so, yeah, I think, you know, we do it for a reason so we can obtain eyeballs and then you get people to trust you and say, hey, yes, this drew you in, but here's what else we're going to do. And this is why we need to do it. Yeah. I, I remember talking to uh, a golf fitness pro that most people listening to this would know who, who he is. Um, I don't want to share his name, but him telling me years ago, like, you know, you got to give them a little bit of the golfiness, right? Because that's why they're there. You got to do this. And he's like, maybe that's you working on a, a one-legged deadlift kind of position, but maybe you do throw a golf club in their hand. Maybe you do, you know, make it a little a little golfish, as, as Charlie Weingroff would say, but because that's there to give them the buy-in. And then, that, and then you can, you know, we've always said here at 18 Strong, we kind of like, we lull you in, like you're saying, we lull you in with the golf stuff, but we hopefully provide you with enough value where you then leave with, you know, more strength, more mobility. And you didn't really know that you were coming for some of that stuff, but but you then see the benefit of it and, you know, the balance and, and whatever those pieces are. But but yeah, we want to do what we want to do. So as the clients, they, they're coming in, they want they want to maybe hit some balls. They want to maybe, you know, put the strap on and pretend like they're in their golf posture. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you understand or as long as they understand, like, why we're doing it. And it's not just because it's a cool, fancy looking golf move right oh absolutely and you know it, it goes back i mean it's not just with golf right i mean when you know a big chunk of my career was training people the general population that wants to lose weight what do most people think they need to do to lose weight cardio or something like very high intensity like get really sweaty so you know at the end of the workout right like we're like 45 50 55 minutes into an hour long workout what do you need to hit them with you know you got to get them got to get them sweaty because that's what they want right like and there's nothing wrong with that you know, like, hey, I just got you through this strength training workout. Here's going to be the meat and potatoes of what we did. But you still have this belief. And like, you know, I'm reading a book right now. And like, you know, one of his laws is like, you know, you can't change someone's belief. And if people believe that they need to do this golf exercise or they need to do some cardio to lose weight, throw it in there, right? Like, let them do it because they believe that. And that that helps them like get to their end goal. And, you know, so I think fitness is so much of a, of a mind game, right? Too. And like, no, I don't want, look, probably shouldn't say game, but it's like, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is up here. Yeah. And, and I, I truly believe that if, if that person doesn't really know what the intention of them, whatever exercise program it is that they're doing, they, they won't get that, that result because it's not focused in on that. Even if they're maybe do, are doing the same exercises as somebody else that, that's there for that goal, there's something about, you know, that whole mind body connection or just connecting with the, the purpose of it that, kind of makes you do the other little ancillary things that you don't even think about to get you closer to that goal. Uh, this, so speaking of that, uh, one other uh, podcast topic that you had had on your show was uh, the idea of gaining muscle. So, you know, I, I think that, first of all, this demographic often thinks that gaining muscle is kind of in the past, uh, you know, the, the guys that are 35, 40, 45 plus. Um, but then especially if you're on a golf program, is it possible to still gain muscle while still helping your golf game. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and flex on camera, but I, 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 I think, I think so. Um, you know, a lot of it has to do with nutrition, right? Like how you're going adequate protein, things like that to help you build uh, lean tissue. Right. Um, but you know, when you progressively overload and you, um, you know, I think a lot of the, you know, we used to think that, um, muscle was built like mainly with volume right? Like high volume, like three sets of 10 or four sets of 10 was kind of like the, the name of the game in the bodybuilder world, right? Um, those types of rep ranges to get adequate muscle hypertrophy. Um, but you know, it's just, it's, it's mechanical tension. And so you got to get in some hard reps. So like in my, in my programs, I make sure to put in, you know, like RPE or like reps in reserve, like, you know, the rate of perceived exertion or reps in reserve. So that way you can get that, you know, close to failure. So that way you can build muscle mass, right? And it's going to look, I think what's interesting is people don't understand that, that muscle looks different on everybody, right? Like whether, whatever your body composition is, like I have short limbs, like I'm only five, six and like I have short arms, I have short legs. So like, it looks like I have a, you know, it looks like I'm huge, but like, I mean, or not huge, but I, I have a small area here to pack in the muscle, right? I'm not tall, you know? So like, um, but it just looks different on everyone. I think the people miss the nutrition part. And I, you know, I know some people are afraid to bulk up, like, oh, I don't need to, you know, get all big and stuff like that. And it's like, trust me, like, it's really not going to happen. 
as much as I would love it to happen, because like I would be freaking jacked about it if I could get any, you know, if I could get any bigger, like I would be there because that's what I want because I like that because I'm I'm a meathead at heart, right? But um, New England golf specific training, yeah. I mean, I get that all the time where people are like, hey, you know, here I'm doing your like. It's usually because I offer a free trial, so people like start the trial and they're like, hey man, there's only like two chest exercises in here, and I don't see any arms. Like, you know what? Like, I want that stuff. Like, can I add that in? I'm like, why don't you just give it a shot here? We got heavy pulls. We got tons of rowing. There's pressing. There's push-ups. There's all this kind of stuff. Like, we've got squats. It's total body. You are going to build muscle if you, if now, if you, if you do the workouts and you check the box and you mail it in, you're not, you know, you're not going to get anything, right? Like, even if you do that with mobility, like, mobility is like, I think you had a Dr. Uh, Kyle on here, right? Kyle Richmond. Yeah. Yeah, even talked about getting sore during mobility. I, I loved hearing that. Like, yeah, you got to push your mobility, right? Like, you know, you don't, you shouldn't check in anything or uh, check the box on anything. Like, go hard on your mobility. Like, go for it. Same thing with like your power. Like, all your all your exercises should be like you should be like get putting some effort into it, and your body will respond to that if you give it like proper nutrients to build that up. And so I, I think yeah, that's one thing you know in my programs. Like my wife, my wife's a nutrition coach. She wrote like an ebook that goes along with our um, our lift heavy swing fast. It's called Eat to Perform. It's not nice. only like it's your nutrition, help your body composition, but it also helps your performance too. So very important. But yes, to answer your question, go all the way back around. I strong. I mean, I'm. I feel like I'm living proof of like, yeah, you can get pretty good sized muscles from doing a golf specific program. Yeah, and the fact that. When you do, or if you do have a good amount of muscle mass, you can still move very well. You know, you, you watch your golf swing uh, on some of your videos, you crush a ball. I, I saw, what was it, 171 ball speed on the one, just the one swing that I saw on the website. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you know, like people think that the, you know, big, strong, athletic looking builds may not be able to move very well through a golf swing. But when you're doing the right things, you're, you're training the right way and, you're not, even though, you know, meatheads at heart, even, but, you know, doing it the right way for the golf swing, you can still create a lot of movement and mobility and that athletic motion without suffering, even though you're building muscle mass. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, one of the topics I hammer on a lot is like, is bodybuilding just because bodybuilding is popular. And I think that's what a lot of people just realize. I think that's like the only way to train, right? It's like leg day, back day, chest day, stuff like that. Yeah. And I think the common misconception out there is that like a, a bodybuilder, someone with a lot of muscle is like not flexible or they're not mobile, but I can show you tons of pictures online of like, uh, like Roddy Coleman, you know, he is just massive man. Oh, yeah. He can like do the splits, right? Like these guys are super mobile that they, they run into a problem, right? When their soft tissue gets so big that like, say like, you know, their biceps and their pecs like hit each other. And they can't like physically grip like a golf club, right? They they are so massive that they like their hands get like this close together. I know a guy like that. He was my physical therapist and down in Jupiter. Um, and that's that's only when it becomes a problem. And you, most people, like unless they take a little bit of something, something, you know, what I'm talking about like they're never ever going to get that close, right? And like I'm yeah. I'm, I'm a decent sized guy, and like I told my swing coach uh, Justin Kraft, I was like, hey man. Look at my swing. My body can do whatever you tell me it needs to do. Like I'm mobile. I can get in whatever position. So don't hold back. Like if, if I need to rotate my hip and, you know, rotate my thoracic spine and get good hip depth and do this and do that, like tell me and I will figure it and My body can get there. I just got to learn how to do it. There's a, another point that you've made that I, I really like. And uh, some of the coaches on the, on, that are listening to this may not love that we bring this up, uh -oh. but you, you say that uh, you don't need a personal trainer, oh. right? Like you, so, yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit because I've had conversations about this, and this is coming from a guy that still works with a lot of people in the gym on a daily basis. I, I still do a lot of in-person training, but I think there's a lot to be said um, for this statement of uh, that people don't need a personal trainer. Yeah. So where do I begin with that? Uh, Wherever you want, man. Just yeah. let it rip. You're not going to link my phone number on here, are you? And like I get people harassing me. No, just your DMs, <laughs> just your social media DMs. Yeah, get ready. That's fine. Those are those are uh, those are full of stuff, anyways. Anyway, yeah. So um, I mean, I was personal trainer for a long time. I still am, right? Um, and I get it. Like it's a business, absolutely. But I always felt my job 
was to be an educator and not to like overly educate and talk. Like you'll probably notice, like, I don't think I've, I've said a very big word yet. And I probably won't um, just because that's not how I speak to people. And I don't speak that way to my clients. Like I want to educate them. Like, here's why we're, here's why we're doing this. Here's how you need to do it. Cause everyone needs to do it differently, right? Like everyone needs to squat, but you don't have to back squat, but everyone should squat or split squat or whatever. And each person is going to do it differently just because the way they move and the way their anatomy is and so on and so forth. So my job is an educator. And I always feel that, you know, that little saying, like you can um, teach a man to fish, all that, you know, whatever. Yep. Everyone knows how that goes. But um, so like, I always feel like that was my job. Now, here's where like, now personal training is expensive. And if, and if someone can afford it and they enjoy you, right? They should keep training with you. Like I, I always told my clients, like I am going, and this was like one of my sales pitches, part of it. I was like, Hey, I'm going to teach you enough to where you can do this on your own. Now, my job is also to have you enjoy working with me so much, see the results and see that I can keep bringing value to the table that you still keep paying me. Right. And the people that the people will believe that, like they appreciate the honesty, like, okay, yeah, you know what? I, I can afford to keep paying you. And there's also the accountability piece and like, you know, you do get better results. Like when someone is watching you and, and pushing you and motivating you and you're held accountable to a schedule, like you're not going to, you know, cause I think most trainers probably have a cancellation policy, right? You make that appointment, you are going to show up or else you're going to lose your $150 or whatever it is that you're paying, you know? So all that stuff plays a part of it, but to actually do the exercise, I feel like my job should have been to teach you enough to do it on your own. And then we can, and then, you know, then that person, cause again, my, I talked about the beginning of the show, like you can only as a personal trainer, like 30, 40 sessions a week is like 12 people. And if you're a good trainer, you've probably got people that are also waiting to get in your door. So now, so it's like the business part of it. I want to take money out of personal trainers pockets. Like now you move this person that was training with you one-on-one to room to programming, right? Like use an app, um, there's a ton of great apps out there to set people up on customized programming. If you want there, that that's a way to, you know, to, to streamline your business, right. To scale your business was the word I'm looking for. And then now you take that new person in, right. And, and then help them the same way. So like, that's what I've always believed. Now, granted, I was able to keep people for a long time. Cause like, they were just like, Hey man, no, I'm just gonna keep paying you. Cause that's a lot easier for me to just pay you. And pe people have the means they'll, they'll, they'll do it. Yeah. And I mean, just to, to second that, there's the accountability piece. Some people are just paying because they want they want that meeting or you know that appointment on their calendar. They know I, I've got I've got a guy just like that. He's like, I know that I could do most of this myself, but I'm not going to do it by myself. And having you on the calendar, make sure that I do it two, maybe three times a week. Um, but I am 100% with you that our job as coaches is to help educate and teach people to take take responsibility for themselves. And I, I can personally say that from experience, I've seen clients of mine that I've worked with continuously. And then once they decided that, you know what, I can I can take some responsibility here and do this, then they really turn it on. And then they're more, you know, they're more bought in. They start to do more. They start to kind of start living the lifestyle a little bit more. And I think it's it's once the person ends up making that decision that, hey, this is on me. This isn't on Cody. This isn't on Jeff. This isn't on whatever the coach, but I got to get in there and do it. And maybe they're still coming in uh, once a week, twice a week, but them getting out and doing it on on their own too. You know, that's, and I, I, I'm with you. I feel like it's our job. And sometimes I see that the people that end up taking on that responsibility, that's when they really start to see like, holy shit, this is, this stuff's working and I'm going all in. Yeah. Or, or, and you can, you can group them together. Like, right. Like if you had a couple guys, like I had a couple guys, um, that were kind of like that, like, Hey, I could probably do this on my own. And like, I'm like, well, this, this other guy is doing pretty much the same thing you're doing. Once you guys start working out together and then I trained them together, you know, that was like one on two. So I, my, my other time opened up for someone else and then now they do it on their own. And then I had a client, um, you know, before that they're my friends now, um, you know, she's the, the wife signed up the husband. And to help him get out of a rut, he was in, he was really stressed at work and stuff like that. And she even told, and then, um, you know, he would come, he would just come straight from work, vit to me about his day. I'd be like, okay, cool. I gave you that five minutes. Let, let's get to work now. And he'd leave, you know, happy as shit. And she would text me afterwards. She's like, oh my God. She was like, I will pay, I, I will just pay for this forever. Cause he comes home now. 
He's in a good mood. I don't have to deal with like what you just went through. Like that first few minutes, She's like my life's better. His life's better. Like I'll just pay for this. You know, so it's like never, you never know like what kind of effect you're going to have. Yeah. And, and back to your hospital, hospitality background. Like I think that's where, you know, people that have, have backgrounds and stuff like that, or, you know, my, my initial degree in school is psychology. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I got so much, so much out of my psychology degree compared to my physical therapy degree, just with interacting with people and being able to do that because face it, we're like bartenders. We're like, you know, hair, hairdressers where people come and yeah, they're doing their workouts, but some of it is, it, it's almost like just a, a session where they can just kind of let some things go. They can talk to us about stuff and uh, that can be just as beneficial as the workout that they get for, for real. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, we're just trying to help people's quality of life and help them play better golf too. And you know, like, you know, so, so great that it all just kind of works together and yeah, yeah. like, you know, you make like lifelong friends. Like, I mean, I'm still, I still talk to these people. Like actually they were um, in my uh, most recent like video shoot that I did down in Austin. I called them up. I was like, Hey, I need some, I need some subjects, you know, like come, come get in. Like, you know, so it's, it's great. Cool. All right, my man. Well, we're going to close up with some questions that we ask everybody that comes on the 18 strong podcast. So I, I know, you know, that these are coming first and foremost, Caddyshack, Caddyshack or Happy Gilmore. You know, I love this question. Um, didn't one of the guys from Caddyshack recently die? Sadly, um, you know what? I don't know. Anyways, um, Happy Gilmore. I mean, I was born in '87. Happy Gilmore came out. You know, I was still pretty young, but you know, I love Adam Sandler. There was a people you had a clip of the wedding singer the other day. I thought it was hilarious. Like, so I mean, yeah, Adam Sandler, the Bob Barker fight. So, yeah, Happy Gilmore. Oh, awesome. What would be your walk-up song to the first tee if you could pick one? You, you know, I love this question because I'm a you know. Um, so this wouldn't be something I listen to, but I think when you walk up to the first tee, right, you're kind of like trying to get in other people's heads, not just for you, right? It's like, right about this for a second. So I listen to, when I work out, I listen to heavy metal. So there's, uh, ever heard of a band called Lamb of God? No. So the song's called Lamb of, Lamb, it's called Lamb of God, or Lamb of God's the name of the band. The song's called Break You. And I probably don't want to, you don't want to play it with like small children around. It's, it's, uh, you know, it'll get you going. Okay. If you're ready to lift heavy, like it's, it's going to juice you up. It's, blow your eardrums out but yeah a it little bit of heavy metal okay i love it is there a book that you have that you like to recommend to people or a book that has really meant something to you over the years that that you tend to either give as a gift or recommend yeah uh i got it right here i, I reread it all the time um how to win friends and influence people dale carnegie i think it's like the oldest book you know out there um i read i, I kind of read a lot but um i reread that one like all the time. I mean, I think as, as a personal, as a, as a fitness person, it's huge, right? Because influence kind of sounds wrong, right? Like I'm trying to, but I'm trying to influence a good result. I'm trying to influence a good positive behavior from someone else and like how I can uh, communicate that and have that happen. Like, you know, especially for me right now, since I'm communicating on a large scale with my app, it's like hundreds of people that, and I also don't get any feedback from them. Like a lot of them, right? Like, only a few, only a small percentage of them like react, like comment. Most people are just sitting there doing yeah. workouts, which is perfectly fine. So it really helps you communicate. I think it's probably one of the best books um, I've ever read. And then uh, right now I'm reading. I know you didn't ask for two, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. No, I was I was actually just gonna ask what you're reading because you mentioned that. So uh, Stephen Bartlett, he's got a pretty cool podcast. I, he's kind of got some interesting episodes as of late, but this is his The Diary of a CEO: The 33 Laws of uh, Business and Life, and I talked about it a second ago like one of the things he one of his laws is that you cannot change someone's beliefs so i've got to really think about that too when i'm programming exercises for people right is i know there's a lot of people that don't believe like in doing a lot of barbell lifts and there's some people that are diehard into barbell lifting and don't want to do anything else so i mean you've got to kind of figure out like how i can communicate to each camp yeah i'm definitely putting that one on my list that that sounds super interesting and it's funny the uh, how to win friends and influence people. This is the second podcast in a row that that book has has been mentioned. Uh -huh. uh, so the episode that's coming out this week, as a matter of fact. Oh well, then uh, then just then awesome. just cut it out and just have me put up the diaries. <laughs> no man, no. I, I love I love the repeats because uh, it because it shows that it's it's such an influential you know influential book and it has been around for you know so many years. Um, and yeah, that's one of the ones that I read a long long time ago and has always stuck with me and have reread a couple times as well. Awesome. 
All right, who would you put in your celebrity foursome if you got to pick four four guys, three or four to go play golf with, um, and you could go, you know, spend time with past, present, doesn't matter if they're dead or alive, who's who's in your foursome? So another question. Like these are good questions. You did a good job on these. Um, ah, thank you. So I'm a history buff, like at heart. Like I go to bed watching like um, World War II documentaries. So it would be some like kind of famous. Like, you know, world leader, like probably like an, an Abraham Lincoln at Winston Churchill, Franklin Roosevelt, maybe Lyndon Johnson or J- JFK. Like, I don't know, someone like that. One of those guys probably would suck at golf, but you know, maybe not. Maybe one of them was pretty good. I don't know. Um, then, you know, definitely, I know, I know this one's been said before, but I think you got to play with Michael Jordan. Right. Like, I mean, that's just, yeah. I don't know. And then, yeah. um, you know, I was a I'm, I was a diehard Phil fan. I got a hat signed by Phil. You know, like you know, I, I, there's a lot of controversy around Phil lately, which bums me out a little bit because I think it took away some of his. Uh, you know, maybe he deserved it. I don't really. I'm not going to get into all that, but you know, I, Phil. I, I, th- I just think playing around a golf with Phil would be a hell of a lot of fun. Oh man, and can you imagine the trash talk between him and Jordan, and the, yeah. and the money being slung around? Yeah, and then yeah, oh yeah, Dave. Think about the the, the group itself. Like I was just thinking about. And me individually with each one of them. But yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd be awesome. Yeah. You right, so tell yeah. Abe Lincoln like how to chip, you know, it'd be, it'd be great. He might, be I, he awesome. might have been a lefty. I don't know. All right. If we could, if we had the 18 strong Learjet fueled up, we're like, Cody, we're picking you up. You get to pick where we're going. Where's the bucket list course that we're heading to today? You know, um, I know, I know you, you, it was the, the background. We can't say Augusta or St. Andrews. So, um, you know, I, I don't know why I have like, I, I'm, I'm kind of like a gut like person. Like if I just feel like I like something, then I'm just going to kind of like it. And uh, I don't know why Kiowa, maybe it's because I was a Phil fan. And I just like went nuts when he won the PGA a few years ago at Kiowa. But I don't know. Something about that course just looks really fun. Um, you know, I like the, I like the Carolinas. Like I think that's a cool area of the, of the, of the world, of the country. So yeah, I don't know why like just Kiowa like kind of just draws me, you know, the ocean course, of course, but yeah. Cool. Uh, what's a social media account that you follow that you think the 18 strong crew would be interested in following as well? Doesn't have to be golf. Doesn't have to be fitness. Could be anything. Uh, man, now that you said it doesn't have to be fitness or anything. Um, and you can give, you can give a couple if you want. Yeah. I think you're learning. I like to give a, I like to give a few, uh, um, I definitely, uh, Minnow and Selman's, um, and bio lane. They are a couple of people that, cause I, I do like, I'm, Again, like I'm always trying to I think all of us are like trying to like push the envelope and what we're doing here and like how we can create the best like golf fitness program for people. And I think there's still a lot to be learned about what we can do. Um, and I think we, and I don't know if there's, I don't know of any active studies of like a golf performance, but you can find a lot of studies on other types of human performance and like other ways of training. So like these two guys, like BioLane is more of like a nutrition guy. Minnow, he kind of breaks down a lot of like the training stuff. And they they kind of just break down studies. And if you subscribe to them, you can also like, you know, view their like synopsis of of, of how they broke down the study. Because like I've tried to read some of these, you know, like PubMed studies and I'm not smart enough. Like it's just, it, it's so long. It's confusing. Like, so I need guys like that that get, just give me the information, right? And then I can turn around and give it to someone else. Um, so I really like that when it comes to like, programming with people um and how i'm gonna keep like pushing the envelope in the programs that i write and then um have you, have you heard of a goob u2 no so this is how pretty, do you spell it this is pretty his is pretty fascinating um and you can't watch too much of him because it kind of gets you know he what he does is he finds fitness frauds right and it, um he actually i think he's expanded lately but it's mainly people in the fitness industry that are frauds that okay. are possibly purchasing followers that are photoshopping that are just lying right and um he like exposes them so it's pretty wild i i, I wouldn't want to do what he does because he's destroying some people and it's pretty crazy um some of the he's got to have death threats and stuff it's wild but um oh. yeah like i mean it, it's crazy you know like and and i think these people should be exposed because you're exploiting you know, someone in need, like for their, like fitness is usually they're coming to you when, like, when you need some, when someone's like in need, like sometimes it's desperate need, like maybe they are seriously going to have a health problem if they don't get some help, like if they don't lose weight or whatever it is. And these people are like, you know, 
photoshopping or showing that they get this person results and they don't or that this is going to work and it doesn't like so that kind of stuff i think is it's important but it's also mm -hmm. kind of i don't know you can go down the rabbit hole of washing him it's tread with caution yeah and then and he also like go, goes into other stuff too but yeah okay yeah because i know so so bio lane lane norton um you know he he does a little bit of that so if you're saying this is you know and, and he just kind of calls people out on their bs right Yes. But this sounds like it's a whole it's a whole different level of of you know kind of investigating and and bringing people to light. Yeah, okay. and then you know, and then he'll like you know the finding people that have like fraudulent followers. Like I think that's pretty big in our space too. It's like yeah. competition is fine, right? Like other people in our space, fitness, golf, fitness, whatever it is. Like I, he hasn't like exposed anyone in the golf fitness today, so I'm not calling out like anyone in our little group here. But um, you know, it's it's. It's competition is fair. Cheating is not. Yeah. So if you're, Agreed. if you're showing like that, Hey, my account's this and I'm doing none this great and you're really not like it's, it's wrong. Yeah. False advertising. Yeah, for sure. All right, my man, last question. What's the best piece of golf advice that you've ever been given? You know, so the only piece I ever got for like years was keep your left arm straight. And, uh, when I got my first golf lesson, the guy was like, man, you really keep that left arm straight, don't you? But, um, <laughs> But no, and then uh, I think lately, um, kind of talking with, with what, what, what we talked earlier, I have a client who's a really good golfer, club champ at Southern Hills. And we've kind of talked about this whole, like, and one of the things he said to me one day was, play golf, not golf swing, right? And I don't hit a draw very well. I'm, I cut the ball. I can hit it straight. Um, well, sometimes, you know, not all in command. I'm not a pro, but um, I don't hit draws very well. But if, so if I stand up there and I have to hit a draw and I'm thinking about club path and starting, you know, starting line and this and that and what I got to do to get the ball to go right to left, I'm screwed. But if I just stand up there and like take like a caveman-esque, like look at the ball and be like, ball, go there, you know, kind of thing, like little white ball, go that way. It's better. Not, it doesn't always work, but you know. Taps into that inner athlete, right? Just see the ball and smack it. Just hit the ball. Just hit the little white ball. <laughs> just do it. Awesome. All right, my man, this was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to watching your content continue to build and grow, and uh, the Train Heavy uh, Swing Fast program, it looks, there you go again. Yeah. Um, you know, lo looks awesome, so guys, make sure you go check out Cody Westcott, and it's, uh, where's the best place for them to follow you? Instagram, right? And Instagram, and, you know, I, I love YouTube. I think YouTube is a uh, super high value, um, but yeah, Instagram is my biggest platform, so, but Cody Westcott Golf, anywhere, I'm on everything, so whatever you're a uh, cup of tea is i'll be there awesome brother really appreciate you being here and i know the 18 strong crew is going to go check you out and uh we'll be in touch soon i appreciate it thanks for having me thanks for listening to the 18 strong podcast and if you found this episode helpful don't forget to share with your friends and of course go follow us over on instagram at 18 strong thanks again we'll catch up with you next week train hard practice smart and play better golf